Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be discussing some things in Wings of Fire that make absolutely zero sense, yet seem to be ignored by the fandom. There are some spoilers in here for Arc 2, so if you haven't yet completed that arc, then please click off the video. Also, before we begin, huge shout out to my patrons, Crazy Roblox Man, Lord is Opod, and Drag1195. Thank you so much for supporting me. Links to social medias are in the description down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Why was Onyx allowed in Jade Mountain Academy? She is 19 years old, and the oldest of her claw mates, Flame and Ember, and the Dragonets of Destiny themselves are only 7 years old, having just reached Dragon Adulthood. The oldest dragon who works in the school is Webbs, but we don't have an exact age or birth year given for him. So why is a 19 year old Sandin with a 12 year age gap allowed in a school full of Dragonets? You guys thought Glorybringer was creepy. I think this is even worse. I understand that Tui wanted to include that whole bizarre royalty twist, but she could have easily just made Onyx one of the teachers at the academy instead of a student. It just makes no sense for a grown adult to be in a school with a bunch of children, especially because she is not a teacher. Just something to think about. The next thing in Wings of Fire that literally makes zero sense is the sizing of pretty much everything, but especially the food. I read a post by Dead by Mamba really got me thinking about just how messed up sizing is in Wings of Fire. We've seen a size chart for dragons compared to humans, although literally nothing aligns with this. At all. Death by Mamba pointed out that fruit is a key part of a dragon's diet, especially when it comes to randoms because they're vegetarians. So it clearly has to be large enough to satiate a dragon's hunger. For Clifford's birthday, Dark Sucker gives her one kiwi as a gift. But as shown in The Brightest Night, Flower, Smolder's pet human, peels and eats a banana by herself in the time it briefly takes for Smolder and Sunny to have a conversation. This means they have to be human-sized, otherwise she wouldn't be able to do that. Peacemaker's song that Moon sees in a vision, drop strawberries as big as a scavenger's head, literally confirms the fact that a strawberry the size of a human head, which is as big as ours, is abnormal, and they are much smaller than that. So how can fruit satisfy dragons who are absolutely massive? They have to eat hundreds of fruit in one sitting just to satisfy themselves. But it doesn't make sense with meat, either. In the graphic novels, we've seen that cows are basically just a little smaller than dragons. But humans have been shown to have livestock and other animals as pets. How can they watch over and control dragon-sized animals? And even if you don't want to consider the graphic novel size to be canon, this still is an issue because meat is enough to make a dragon full. In some, di in some dinner sequences, only a little bit of food is mentioned. For example, think about one of the first scenes in Wings of Fire. Plan the others don't eat hundreds of cows, right? And to make things even more confusing and to further prove my point, Clay fantasizes about having hundreds of different aquatic creatures, including whales, which we know are dragon-sized because Tsunami bumped into one. This scene was an exaggeration because Clay is always hungry, and it mirrors the whole I'm so hungry I could eat a horse illustration that some people use when they're super hungry. We can't actually eat a horse. That would be way too much food in one sitting. This means that eating that much food is abnormal, so those creatures have to be dragon-sized. They were as small as humans, saying that you wanted to eat that many creatures would be totally normal and enough to satisfy a dragon. So how do humans even raise livestock or eat it? That's the equivalent of a regular person hauling around and cooking a T-Rex. It's just impossible to take care of it with our size and limited abilities. Sorry, my brain is hurting a lot, and I bet yours is now too. But I still have one more that's been on my mind recently. Is Sky immune to fire? He's Peril's twin and they were both hatched in the same egg. So how did he even survive? Are scales invulnerable to fire or work some like, somewhat like clays? Because if not, he would have been burned up instantly in his egg. As soon as Kestrel laid the egg, Sky would have burned up. Tui has thought of this too, because she had Scarlet come up with a lie to tell Peril that she killed her brother in their own egg. So... Why didn't it happen? And why haven't we been given an explanation? It would have been easy to just have a scene in Dragon Slayer where Ren realizes Sky is immune to fire, making him even more different to any dragon she had ever seen. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I know your brain probably exploded like 15 times while watching this, and you're not alone. Mine imploded about 57 times. Nonetheless, this was a pretty fun and interesting video to make. Now I'm definitely going to keep an eye out when it comes to this stuff.
Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.